social media has had a major impact in the world of communication and film. We all know that. Now, one content creator never thought it will take her to places she's never been. Now, Perseverance Madameni, also known as Madam Speaker to her followers, has received countless opportunities since joining the internet space. She recently traveled to Kenya to graduate for a, from a, a YouTube black Voices program and Perseverance Marimani. Uh, Marimani joins me now uh, in the studio. Uh, Perseverance, thank you so much for your time. Uh, you came back. I thought that, you know, once you do the things that you've done, you would have gone off and seen the world and we'd only be able to keep up with you on social media. What was it like? I mean, I saw when the, the, the uh, statement first went out to say who were the content creators uh, selected for uh, this really bespoke program. I mean, it's the, uh, those at the cutting edge of, of content creation. What was it like getting that call? Hi, thank you so much for having me. Um, YouTube Black Voices Fund, for me, because it was a new space, I had only entered the YouTube space for like six months. Wow. When, yeah, and I didn't even know what it was about. I'm telling you that the only time that I actually knew what YouTube Black was and how big it was, was after I got the congratulations email. Gosh. Yeah, because of the type of content that I create, you know. So it was an amazing, life-changing experience to be that. And in as much as I would love to just go away, and stay there and just create content there. But I feel like, you know, there's no place like home. And I definitely have to make an impact right here at home first. What did, what did you learn? What did you learn from being in the space with all those other content creators and for, for those who you were uh, selected to be more mentored by? I think it, it, it has more to do with the fact that, starting with my name, Madam Speaker, because I was given that name because I talk a lot, when I had to meet up with a lot of people who create different type of content, it actually made me realize that I don't talk a lot. I was just with a different crowd. And being able to learn from other people to say, content creation is actually a job. It's actually something mm. that other people take very seriously and uh, they're making a living out of it more than just uh, making an impact in their societies. So for me, it was life changing, having to mix with people from five other different uh, countries in our, in, our, in the whole globe, it was out of this world. The experience was just out of this world. Tell me about your character, Madam Speaker. Where, where, where did that creation come from? Uh, the name came from, I, apparently, they, they gave me a code name. You know when you talk a lot or whatever, people will give you a name, right? Oh, yeah, I might, I might know <laughs> how, how that feels. Yeah. <laughs> you always so, had one person in the family like, oh, yeah, of course she became a broadcaster. She's yeah. always going to be a broadcaster. Because <laughs> she talks a lot, right? But you found your space. So the same thing applies to me because I didn't even know that I was a Madam Speaker until I heard, like, oh, that one is a Madam Speaker. I'm yeah. like, I like it. It fits. Actually, yeah, it fits, you know. And I'm not even going to say, well, I don't like the name because it really does speak to the type of things that I, I do or say so I'm gonna take it and run away with it so that's how I actually became a madam speaker and now it's a brand goodness me I see your Facebook page your bio you call yourself just a village girl with with big, big dreams. dreams yeah um, tell me why you say that because um, I grew up in Mashamba village mm. Mashamba village is uh, in the deep rurals of uh, Venda yeah. and I went to school there the only time that I stepped out of Mashamba village was when I went to varsity when I went to DUT in Durban and even when I was still in Mashamba village, I dreamt big. You know, I saw myself being on big stages, mixing with people from all over the, the world. And that is always a, a reminder for me. It grounds me. It, it keeps me grounded to say no matter how big I can become as Madam mm -hmm. Speaker, at some point I was just a village girl with big dreams and I'm going to do whatever it takes to go chase those dreams. And you never had, uh, I believe the phrase is called tall poppy syndrome, you know, that we have... And, and it's a problem in many of our communities. They're like, oh, who does she think she is? Yeah. You know, um, and, it, and it, how, it does hold a lot of young people back. Yeah. Have, have you ever come, did you ever come across that? And, and how did you deal with it? If you had to advise somebody how to deal with that um, pushback from those around them, either in their families or in their communities? I have had a lot of tongue lash from mm -hmm. the community and also from the place where I stay right now because I'm not staying in the same place where I grew up mm -hmm. because people don't understand what I'm doing. You mm -hmm. understand? So when I had to go out there and mix with other people and understand that actually there's a place for me in this world, uh, it made me to become more inspired because just because people don't understand what I'm doing, it does not necessarily mean that there's not a space for me to do what I do. And um, just because I do something which is completely different to what they're used to, it does not mean that we cannot coexist. So I did face a lot of tongue lash. I still am. Some people are still warming up to me being the Madam Speaker that I am, <laughs> but I'm not even about that life. I'm moving, okay? I'm doing what I'm doing, and it, I, I sleep better at night knowing that whatever it is that I, do, I did, I 
it's fulfilling for me. And, and for me, I feel like the voice and the hunger and the thirst to just do what I do is louder than any other voice that can ever say anything out there. So all of that, it's okay. As long as they're watching my content and, and, and I'm creating revenue, I'm happy. Um, what do you think makes you so relatable? Is, is it, do you think it's the subject matter, the things that you decide to talk about? Do you think it's the way you do it? Is, is it your backstory that's so relatable? What do you think, think it is? I think the thing that makes it so relatable, the, the topics that I talk about, is that um, I had to search the stuff that I want to talk about or things I want to learn about, right? Mm. And I couldn't find them anywhere. You know, like, for example, I want to search about child favoritism about growing up in a home where you are the black sheep of the family. But when I search about all that stuff on social media, I'm not finding it anywhere. Mm. So I open up a platform. I'm like, okay, this is the topic that we're going to talk about. All the black sheep, please, please gather here. <laughs> Let's hear your take. All the children who are not favorite children, why are you All the middle children. children. Yeah, all the middle children. <laughs> gather here and then it's so relatable because you realize that you're not the only one it's just that there was not a person who was willing to put it out there but people can relate mm. and when you open up the platform they're able to actually engage with you on that do, do you think that we've now moved to a space where people like yourself are the ones that especially young people are coming to you to to find out what the zeitgeist is to find out um, what the uh, important things are that people are talking about and that that it may or has already overtaken your more mainstream platforms um, like the news or uh, traditional radio. Yeah. Uh, do you think the time has come that that is probably going to be ancient history soon and it's going to be up to you and your, your colleagues in your side of the industry? Well, it's not going to be ancient history because I believe that even my dad, for example, he's watching right now because this is what he watches. <laughs> Hi, right? dad. Hi, dad. Shout out to you. So um, I feel like with the type of content that I create, it, it is just so liberating, you know, because anybody who wants to watch something that it's not channeled, per se, yes. they can watch that. But I still feel like both the channels can still coexist, you know, because mm -hmm. there are people that really don't want to be watching things where people just run away with their, you know, whatever information that they want to give out there. But there are people who want to be liberated enough to say, I want to learn what I want to learn without any censoring. So I believe both still have room. Good answer. Because <laughs> <laughs> it allows us to hold on to our yeah, jobs. Yeah, you, you, you should. And I think Moreno, <laughs> my colleague, would agree as yeah. well as he gets ready to bring us the sports. Uh, perseverance, Marimene, what a pleasure to talk to you. And we can only wish you everything of the best on this, on this journey. And people can find you on all your social media platforms. Madam yeah. Speaker uh, is who she is known uh, for um, on social media. And we thank her for her time uh, this morning.